Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we're gonna talk about really popular name necklace and to make it into this puffy rounded shape. Are you ready? Let's get started. All right, so to starting with the name necklace, we wanted to know what type of a font is easy to cast or what is not. So for example, on the top one right there, they look really elegant, but you're going to have a trouble about this area because this area is going to create a uh, really thin, even though it, you make it really uh, tall it won't have a successful casting. So this type of a text is not suitable for the jewelry making. Well, if you talk about, well, then if I need to have some thickness, what about this aerial um, text? It's really solid, it's you know straight and really bold. It is not 100% suitable unless you do some tweak on the design because when you have all those pieces, they need to somehow connect it together, right? Having an O connected to the M, it might not be the problem and this might not be the problem. But whatever the problem is, when you have those two together, it's hard to tell there are two L there. And then when you have this connected that, this connected is really weak and then you don't have the connection there. Right. So even though it's really bulky, it's not a good choice of the name tag unless you wanted to do is have a plate in the back. So it doesn't matter what kind of the font size. If you want to have the tag stand along, that's probably not a good choice. I won't suggest anything like a funky text like this because all those tiny area you're going to have a problem when you try to cast them. Some is too thin, some is too delicate, and the metal just doesn't flow into this tiny area unless you have a plate in the back, okay? So something like this, it's actually doable. You just need to make sure that when you have all the text to together, they are still readable. So for example, I have two L there. Would that be reading as a big A instead of 2L. So this is something that you might need to uh, really think about what is uh, the reading ability for this type of text. All right. I personally like to use something more script because it is more readable and then I can do some tweak there if that is not long enough. I can actually turn on the control point and bring those points out or something like that. Script is usually a good choice there. Okay, so that's using this one to do the demo. First of all, you need to check on the size that you have. Currently, this text, the high, it's about 6.9. It's kind of really tiny, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger like this. Okay, so 11 it might be a good size. You also want to check on the size from here to here. Because it's a necklace, you don't want it to be like too wide and then that was sitting really awkward. Alright, so I got something like this. By the way, if you don't know how to get the text, it's a text object right there and you just uh, choose any of the font that you want it, set it up uh, either the curve, surface or solid. I like to use the curve because I can keep editing. So let's click OK and that's how you get this one. All right, so now that's coming back to here. Now, if this is really thin, as you can see, this part right here, and we are talking about for the casting purpose, right? So when people are designed those texts, they are not designed for casting, they are designed for graphic. So it doesn't matter how thin that is, but think about that. Get your digital caliper and look at it, or get your ruler to look at it. 0.6 millimeter is really, really thin. And then so 0.6 millimeter to fill in the entire of this area, it's gonna be hard. You might have an incomplete casting, like this part is completely missing, this part is completely missing. So what we need to do is we need to make the text a little bit fatter, all right? Well, first of all, I'm gonna select everybody and I'm going to use a trim command. And let's go ahead to trim here, 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 any of the intersection that you have a double line, you want to get rid of them. And once you have done, make sure you join all of them. Okay, the second thing I wanted to do is make sure I don't have those sharp corner 
like here and here because it's gonna cause problem for our casting when we do investment that any like a sharp corner your investment may crack over there all right so we want to do a fillet something really small so let me try fillet corners and i want to try something really small maybe 0.1 and you get something like this. All right, so some area it doesn't get fitted. Uh, we're gonna fit it individually. So point one and see what happened. Okay, that work over there and we don't wanna have sharp corner here, sharp corner here. All right, so make sure you get rid of all the sharp corner. All right, so the third thing we wanna do, we wanna make this text a little bit bogier. So I'm going to use the offset command and offset a little bit more gears. Let's try 0 0.2, maybe 0 0.3, just the outline, and um, you'll get something like this. Okay, and I can delete the original one. So now it's getting fatter. All right, so we have this one. So if we make it into the solid, I'm gonna come into the solid extrude straight. And in this case, I wanted them about uh, 1.6 millimeters, so it will be point eight millimeter on either side. So that will end it up with 0.6. All right, so then we got something like this. If I see in the render view, and you're going to see something like really, really sharp. Now, if you like this one, that's okay. Now, I'm going to show you my little trick. So now a lot of people like to have something really rounded, right? So maybe you wanted to like fit it, but when you try to fit it, uh, even though we do something really small, let me show you the problem will be like something really small, like 0.1 millimeter for the radius. And I pick up everybody and I want to try to do the fillet and it go crazy. You can see all this like arrow showing there and it's not pretty. All right. So the way I like to do it is first of all, I'm going to turn this one into mesh. So I'm going to click on it. Um, you can preview all the detail if you want to, and then you click OK. So that gives you this mesh I'm going to bring to the top. So for comparison, right now, when it turning into the mesh, you, you can use the uh, smooth command. And then you can try to smooth it to get a little bit nicer edge there. For example, like this, and they usually work as smooth, but in this case, I have too many triangles, so it doesn't work really well. Okay, so luckily Rhino 7 has a new function. And by the way, I'm using a Rhino 7 from now on for the demonstration. Okay, so Rhino 7 has this quad rem uh, remesh. It's pretty cool, uh, useful tool. All right, so I would like to get it really close to whatever it is. Let's get a preview first. And you can see I have all those numbers there. Um, and then you can get it really close to your original if you want to. Let's say I want to do 80%. So you will have more uh, quad uh, meshes showing up. Let's say I want to get 100%. All right, as you can see, this is a lot more detail and I wanna click okay, right? So now if I bring up this mesh right here and we're using the smooth command, pick up this object and we can smooth it. Let's say I wanna do something like this, get it something like this and it is a lot more smoother as you can see on the render view. Okay, so it's a lot more smoother. Another thing that we can do, it's gonna go back with the ghost view, gonna do a comparison for you. We're gonna use the quad uh, remesh again. And this time I wanna convert it to the sub D and I don't need to have a 100% match. I just wanna have 50% and let's see a review right there. And we can hide it the input object. So you can see that's already give you a nice round, you know, surface there. And if I move it in this one, sub D coming down here, and you can see this is smoother too. So let's go ahead to compare with the render view. Then you got one with the mesh and smooth 
like this and this one is with the sub D. So you can see the difference between the sub D and this uh, mesh smooth tool and they both gonna get it more rounder than this one here. And after we put the chain and the jump ring, if they look okay, then this make sure the thickness is right that you are ready to cast this. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanted to know more about the jewelry cat design with Rhino, I do have my online course on my website. Check it out, let me know how you like it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next.